Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new movie review video. I watched Uncut Gems for the first time. I ran a poll about a week ago for popular movies, like pretty popular movies that I have never ever seen before. They get a lot of hype and a lot of talk around them and I said which one should I watch first? Uncut Gems 1. So that's what I decided to watch, and now you know why I made the poll to do this video. Hooray! Now usually for the typical movie review I would do, I would review it, share my thoughts, do a little recap, then circle back and give my overall, you know, at the end, thoughts on the whole movie. For the first time watching little series I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna really go into the full recap, just mainly some highlights and just my overall thoughts, my first impressions on seeing a movie that people kind of hype up. Now would I say it's worth a watch? I'd say sure, any movie really is worth a watch. But uh, I don't know if this movie would be for everybody, even though a lot, a lot of people have given this movie praise. There was a lot of Oscar buzz for Adam Sandler coming out of this movie. And I will say, yeah, you know, the praise for his performance is definitely not overhyped at all. He does great in this, probably his most, I guess, serious performance, and he absolutely nails it. He's the scum of the earth, but that's exactly what he's supposed to be. I don't even think he got nominated for an Oscar in 2019, but uh, he definitely should have. Now, before I dive any deeper, I just want to say, while I do think there is a lot of quality behind this movie, it just wasn't the movie that I would enjoy watching or re-watching. I think this is a, a one and done for me. Glad I watched it. I I was satisfied with the end result, but I don't think I'll be going back to this at least anytime soon. It's one of those movies where everybody is just kind of a terrible person. Everybody sucks in this movie other than a couple of like, you know, innocents here and there. Yeah, not a movie I would say I necessarily enjoyed. There are tons of movies that I've seen just like this where I share the same feelings like an Oppenheimer, for example, thought it had a lot of quality. The acting was phenomenal. It deserved all the praise it got, but it just wasn't really my kind of movie. So while I can admit that, yeah, everybody that gave it a thumbs up, you're right. It absolutely deserves it, but it's just not really a me thing. So those are pretty much my opening thoughts. Adam Sandler plays a guy named Howard who sells diamonds and accessories and bling and whatever the hell you want to say. He's also a very sleazy person. Howard is addicted to gambling and he can't pay money that he owes to many different people. So uh, his life is just slowly kind of falling apart. His marriage as well is slowly kind of falling apart. He also has a side chick named Julia who I feel like uh, the more the movie goes on he likes just better than his wife but he wants to also save his marriage but uh, he's a mess plain and simple he's a freaking mess. However it seems that his life may change because he might be racking in a bunch of money because he gets a gem called the black opal from Ethiopia. Holy shit I'm gonna come. And when it arrives, he plans to put it up for auction, but basketball player Kevin Garnett shows up and he's obsessed with the stone. He's like, gimme, give gimme give the give me the thing. And he's like, I'm gonna put it up for auction, man, but you know what? Here, you give me your Celtics championship ring and I'll give you the black opal and you, you know, we'll trade back in the morning. Obviously that goes wrong. Howard goes to pawn the ring gets money, and places a big bet on the Celtics game that night. He actually wins huge. Oh! Oh! Yes! Oh, God, yes! But the whole giving the Black Opal thing to the auction might not happen because Kevin Garnett does not have the gem anymore. Howard's associate Damani was supposed to return the gem for KG, but he's like some other dude has it. Oopsies. So throughout a good chunk of this movie, pretty much the whole movie, there's a big cat and mouse game with him trying to get the black opal, running into problems along the way, like tons of like goons and collectors, people he owes money to. It's just a whole messy situation. Now, one of the main things I was hearing going into this movie over the past couple of years, you know, you hear things, you see pictures and clips about the movie. One common thing I've heard was like how stressful and how anxiety inducing or whatever this movie is with some of the scenarios that poor Howard, well, poor Howard, is put into. And while I will say that, yeah, you're kind of hanging on to every event that's happening. You're like, okay, what, what what's going to happen next? Like, you're kind of waiting to see what's going on. Since he's a gambling man, he takes a lot of risks that usually, for the most part, throughout this movie, they do not pay off. And I can agree that, yeah, there's some stressful scenarios in here, but I didn't really feel that, like, anxious throughout watching this. I didn't feel too much, like, dread or worry. Maybe that's just me, because, you know, like I said, it's not my kind of movie. The first 30 minutes, I will say, I wasn't totally into it, but the more the movie went on, the more I was kind of getting back into it. So it did take a bit of time, but I finally started vibing with the movie. How many acres? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, what are you doing? You're gonna kill yeah. the fish. What the fuck? My fish! My fish! One thing I found kind of funny is that one of the main people that Howard owes money to is actually his brother-in-law and he has two goons that like follow him around the whole first half of the movie so that's kind of fun halfway through I think around there maybe a little before they catch him while he's at his daughter's like play or something 
and uh, they they strip them naked. I want the underwear. And they put him in the trunk of his own car. And he has to call his wife to be like, hey, can you, can you come unlock the trunk? Thank you. It's okay. Thank you. A lot of funny little moments in here, but there are a lot of things happening where you're just like, oh, bro, like, Howard is... Like I said, a freaking mess. When he finally does get the gem back, he puts it up for auction, but then he sees that it is being undervalued. It's worth about one point whatever million dollars. And uh, now it's only going for like a couple hundred thousand, which is still good, but not nearly enough. Kevin Garnett actually is using it as a lucky charm in a sense, because when he had the gem, he was doing great in his games. When he didn't have it for those couple of days, he was doing terrible. So he's at the auction. He definitely wants to buy this thing. So he talks to his father-in-law, Gooey, and is like, hey, please bid on my behalf. I'll give you the money and whatnot if things go wrong. And he'll outbid you for sure because he really wants his lucky charm. And of course, when they're at the auction, he bids like 190. Kevin's like, I can't do it. I'm sorry. So there goes that plan. Things just keep looking up for Howard. That's for sure. If you just give me two fucking... <laughs> The luckiest people around here, you prick. Come on, get out of here. Let's go. Hey. Going back to what I said earlier, this is a movie where just everybody kind of sucks except for a couple of people. Those people being like his wife, who is just trying to keep their family together, but at the same time being like, yo, I'm tired of looking at your ass. I hate being with you. I hate looking at you. And if I had my way, I would never see you again. <laughs> hey. <laughs> and his father-in-law, Gooey. He hasn't done anything wrong, and he seems like a chill dude. Everyone else, on the other hand, is just either wacky or just not a very good person. Like, for example, Howard's associate, Damani, who was supposed to get the stone from Kevin, uh, he numerous times is like, I have the stone. Oh, actually, this guy has it. I have the stone. They meet up. Don't have the stone on me. It's like, dude, you're working for this guy. I know you have your connections and you gotta keep a cool profile with him or whatever. But oh my god, he was just annoying the absolute hell out of me. God fucking damn it, I gotta do everything. Please, stop knocking. It's not gonna help. Go, go. Just grab the damn stone and give it to this crazy son of a bitch so everything could just chill the hell out. Also, the weekend's in there. Uh, he's having like a little party at a club or something. And there's one scene where him... And uh, Howard's side chick, Julia, are in the bathroom, and oh boy. I want to fuck you so bad. Mm-mm. I said no touching. Feel this shit. Feel this. Oh my god. Why are you even this hard right now? And you would really expect the main antagonist, the like head guy that Adam Sandler owes money to, his brother-in-law, you expect him to kind of be... Like, the big, annoying piece of crap guy that's, like, just such a total dirtbag. But he doesn't appear too often in the movie. It's mainly his goons. And when he does show up, he's just like, I need my money. Like, he's very just stone face. End of day? I need my money, man. Come on, like, what are we doing here? So it makes for an interesting watch when the antagonist is just kind of kind of being chill for the most part. And the guy that we're supposed to be following and kind of rooting for is just being the bigger piece of shit like i don't even want to call him an anti-hero because he's not a hero he's just a guy that might be trying to be better like he's trying to get a lot of money to possibly change and turn his life around maybe you know jury's still out on that because i'm gonna be real if you won like a million dollars i i don't think anything super crazy is gonna happen i think he's just gonna end up doing the same thing again but all of that messy nonsense leads us to the end of the movie kg didn't get the gem at the auction so howard calls him up he's like hey i i have the thing again yeah i know you want it it's your lucky charm you're doing terrible in your games i know i know you want the gem the black opal you need it so they meet up in cash boom here's your money here's a black opal and he asked, yo, how much did you, how much did you pay for it? And he's like, uh, you know, a hundred thousand. And that leads into a whole bit where Kevin's like, so you paid a hundred K to a bunch of Ethiopian miners to like pickaxe miners, not like children, but you paid a hundred K for something you thought was going to be worth over a million. Isn't that, is that a little messed up? Then it leads to Howard placing another huge bet. All the money he just got from Kevin Garnett, he puts on the game that he's playing that night at this point. His brother-in-law and his two goons are back at his office being like, all right, it, it's time. 
we're gonna beat the crap out of you again. So he sends his girl Julia to go and place the bet while he's having to deal with his brother-in-law and these two guys that kind of want to kill him. They even hang him out a window. <laughs> Because they're just probably tired of the shit. Me personally, I'm a little tired of the shit too, and I'm just here watching the damn movie. But the Celtics game is going on. Julia has placed the bet, and when all is said and done, the Celtics win the game. The bet goes exactly how it was supposed to go, and I believe I forgot the exact amount, but it's probably like 1.2 million something dollars. Howard's rich. Let's go. Immediately, he lets the guys out of the doorway he trapped him in, and one of the goons. What? Are what the fuck did you just do? Shoot him right in the head immediately. That's your ending, kind of. There's a little after, but nothing too crazy. Uh, just like, we did it. Ah, I got all your money. Unlocks the door. Boom, right in the head. It's like, oh. Okay, that, that's what we're doing. Now, while I'm not a super big fan of the ending, I will give praise to any ending or any moment in a movie that legitimately makes my jaw just drop right to the floor. And when I saw that, I was taking notes on my phone. I was like, okay, so in the end, and I hear the gunshot, and I, like, look up, I'm like, oh my god, they just they just, they just shot Adam Sandler. What the hell? So yeah, that's a, that's a pretty gnarly ending. I'm gonna be real. These first time watching blank movie here videos, they're just gonna be me rambling, and I'm gonna just trim out whatever uh, things that make sense for this to be a review and a slight little bit of a recap just to fill you in if you haven't seen the movie or just, you know, giving my thoughts on specific characters or scenes or moments and what have you. So yeah, those are my thoughts on Uncut Gems. I think this definitely was Oscar worthy. Every performance, as much as I hated almost everybody in this movie, everybody performs their ass off. Not a single actor, I would say, did a bad job. Everybody played their role perfectly. This is a good movie. But, you know, I'm not in any rush to ever watch it again. Maybe my feelings will change when I wake up tomorrow morning, but who knows? I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed Uncut Gems. Let me know your thoughts on it. I've seen a lot of people review it, giving it like four or five stars. I'm kind of a little lower than that. Just because I didn't personally enjoy it all that much doesn't mean I can't give it the praise that it sort of deserves. So there you go, Uncut Gems. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in whatever the next video may be. Goodbye. Everybody kind of sucks, and the movie is pretty decent. Okay, there. That's that's the uh, uncut gems for dummies right there. Okay.